This is your boy Bry. I'm out here on the compound and what we're doing, as promised, we're getting the rocker panels done. Let's take a look. So from the outside you can see now that the outer rocker panel is in. Okay? And don't judge my work, people. Because I'm going to tell you something. At least the rocker panel's in. Look how nice that is. Now, I'm, I'm not afraid to show you my handiwork. I, uh, I'm no body man. <laughs> I'm no body man, but I'm becoming a body man. Let me tell you something. You're lucky I don't become a body man. All you body mechanics, because I will perfect this. I will work longer hours than you, and I will definitely give people a better square deal, better than a round deal, if you know what I mean. So, let me give you a little rundown. Uh, I am going to do the body work on this RAV4, and I'm going to do the body work on my 86 Dodge Ram. And that is going to be beautiful when it's done. Um, however, let me show you what we got underneath. So in the back, you can see I've got this all patched in. And let me tell you something, that wasn't easy to do. That's 16-gauge uh, steel, too. That's heavy steel. Now, don't look at these rivets. These are just temporary. These hold it in place until I come in here and I'm going to MIG weld this. And, and sand that back and get that all welded in. I do have another patch panel that comes in here. But as you see, I've got this all tied in. This is going to get uh, welded in. And we're going to put some tiger hair on it, some uh, fiberglass. And that will definitely keep it. It'll keep it from uh, getting any moisture in there. But take a look at this. We got these all in. All uh, 16 gauge steel. Um, we've got this all on the body line right here. As you can see up front, we've got that all wrapped around. Now I will have to drill a few holes in here when I'm done and put my uh, fluid film in there and go ahead and fluid film these rails on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and take and put some uh, body sealer all up along the top, some seam sealer. We're going to cover all that after we weld it, and then we're going to go ahead and hit it. I've got some uh, fluid film, but before I put that down, I'm going to put some flex seal. I bought some black flex seal for that. But take a look at the back, at the torque box. I got that all. Now, this is all going to get welded here, okay? But that torque box... That's all solid now. And I'm glad I got this done because let me tell you something. This is just riveted and, and uh, screwed in. Look at this. How strong that is. Now wait until I go ahead and I'm going to pull it up next to the garage next and we're going to go ahead and weld that up. But, uh, here. Okay, so that is the situation at hand. We do have the, uh, the left, or excuse me, the right side of the rab done. And I've got about a day and a half into this. Okay, now here, let me show you the other side. This side is not as bad. As you can see, I'm going to dress this up with a wire wheel in here. This is actually still solid. But that right there, that little back by the torque uh, box right there, that's got to get repaired. That's going to get cut out. And uh, I've got my, I've got my uh, hoses going back for the EVAP and all that, so... Uh, I got to be careful. I may have to unhook those, but I've got to rebuild this corner right here. This will all be getting cut out and fixed. And then this, of course, has to go back up to get strapped up. I did that when I was using the uh, needler. I actually broke this piece here. There's a there's a little uh, vent box there. I've got to take that apart and either get a new one or or seal that one up. That's the deal. We've got her in good shape. We had an absolutely beautiful day out here today, and. Uh, it, it's just no humidity. This is one of the days that you literally make memories in your mind over. And uh, I went today, and let me show you what I got here. I went to uh, to Boulevard Trailer out in New Hartford. And I got these new lines right here. And these are for my uh, backup for my propane. I have an indoor boiler that's uh, basically a backup system. And let me show you what we got here. If you've got these lines on the outside of your house, let me show you what, I'm, what I mean here. Look at this. Do you see that? That bad boy right there, uh, the sun, it just eats them up after so many years, you know. But, you know, they didn't, this one wasn't leaking here. This one wasn't leaking. 
but it got kind of rounded off a little bit on the ends and we had to get a new one but here's the other thing you want to use I've got this uh, this good sealer here that's made for uh, gas and uh, hold on let me get this lid on here well let me show you what it looks like see how it looks blue this is for gas okay now you say well what's the difference between that and a regular uh, regular pipe dope or whatever regular pipe dope um, it's not rated for gas because the gas has different chemicals in the natural gas or propane that will eat at it and that's why you want to make sure that you're doing it and doing it right I also want to show you this other thing I had here if I can find it hmm darn it all I don't know what I did with it huh I was gonna show you this uh, it's like a, a spray that you put on everything to test it if I can just give me one minute let me see if I can find it and locate it here now, I just had it this afternoon and I don't know what I did with it oh here it is hold on take a look at this let me show you something people let me just show you something after you do any kind of gas connections um, recently I put a new gas valve down on my indoor boiler and anytime you do that type of stuff you the DIYer are responsible to make sure you don't blow yourself up now if this is beyond your capability then you go ahead and hire it done but I wanted to show you something here now you can use regular soapy water it works as well but this here is an all-purpose leak detector okay and the way you use it is after you have pressurized the system you go in here and you 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 hit it real good like this okay and if you don't see bubbles bubbling up then you're good and what I do is I even check these connections here just to make sure because they're brand new and we're making sure they don't leak and that's what you want to see just the liquid running down okay um, you can see that there's no bubbling um, as a leak you'd know it and you can use Dawn dish liquid too and just make a extra soapy uh, water with it and it, it does the same thing but this is a kind of handy little spray spray uh, you know sprayer that you can spritz it on there with but uh, let's take a look at the shed let's uh, show you what we got here so uh, here's the other I haven't painted that yet but there's the uh, other board I put on the shed okay and we got that all in there we got her in we got her in right but I actually cleaned all the old wood chips out of here and we've got some of our tools in here we got our table saw and our chop saw um, I do have a jackhammer if anybody needs a jackhammer I can help you out and let you borrow that uh, I got my snow blower in here look at I still have a bunch of metal and stuff that was left over from uh, them skids I I took apart but uh, I got my shovels hung up this ha I did this last year though but I got all those I got my little air compressor uh, this actually broke I got to get another one but uh, a buddy of mine just uh, he should be arrested actually because he stole this other one from this guy didn't even know what he was doing um, he got this air compressor from this guy that wasn't a DIYer okay if he was a DIYer he wouldn't have uh, he wouldn't have sold it as cheap as he sold it and I don't want to tell you how much because he got such a deal on it uh, I don't think he wants anybody to know if you know what I mean and I don't blame him if you get a deal like that you've got to keep that under wraps but uh, he got a really good deal on that compressor because the guy was not a DIYer he was a scared person scared to pull the cover off scared to look at it and uh, I think it was just a loose connection a loose wire and it was like a $350 air compressor, and he literally got her for real good price. If you know what I mean. <laughs> but uh, I also got my, uh, my generator in here. As you can see, I have a loft up top, people. This is not just a small little shed. This is a, a shed of many colors and a shed of many uh, storage areas, too. Because I have up top that I put a lot of my stuff up there. And mind you, this is an 8-foot ceiling in here. Okay, and then that loft, we have, I think it's uh, 12 foot to the top. So you've got four, four and a half foot of storage up there in the center. 
Um, I left the front open here so I could actually put a ladder up there and put things up, but I've literally got half of it. It's uh, six feet. Six feet long, okay, and ten feet wide, and I've got some storage. But as you can see, the repairs we did last, last fall are still holding in, okay. We fixed this shed up, and uh, I think it really keeps uh, everything tight and secure as well. The shed of many colors will be here for many years to come. I did go ahead I said, uh, and told you that I pulled all the uh, wood and the wood chips out of here in pieces so that um, we could actually use it a little better. And that's the scenario. Um, the fire, uh, we may get another fire going tonight, but as you can see, We've got the uh, we've got the rocker panels pretty much done, okay. And I've got to travel Monday. I got to go to uh, some training out in Houston, but uh, we've got we've got a beautiful day here. I think planned for tomorrow too. So we're gonna go ahead and get this baby uh, off the jack stands. We're gonna go ahead and hey, listen. Here's the other thing, uh, men. If your women are in the room, uh, tell them to pay attention real quick. Go get your women. If that, I want you to, it's going to help you out a little bit. When the women or people of your family, okay, want something fixed like that, them rocker panels, are they, are they in the room yet, people? Are they in the room yet, family? All right. All right, men, listen. When they say to you, and you go to Harbor Freight, and you're, you're buying uh, some new tools or a new, uh, let's say you're buying some small clamps, they want to know why you bought six of them. Uh, they want to know why you got a, a two rivet guns, okay, instead of just one. Well, you have one for tight areas and one for extra uh, big rivets. Why do you have a body hammer that has a point on it? Why do you have a body hammer that has a, uh, uh, looks like a meat tenderizer on it? This is a shrinking piece here. This shrinks the steel down. Why do you have a dead blow hammer? Why do you have the, all these drills? Why do you have clamp after clamp after clamp? Why do you have torches? Why do you have two pairs of gloves? How come you've got to have a leaf blower? Why do you need the drills? Why do you need all this stuff? You tell them, if you want repairs done, then I need this stuff. You understand? It's either this, or you got to go to the shop and pay the long limousine dollar. This is what people, some people don't understand. You know, you have to invest in your tools. If you don't invest, then you might better just say, you know, I got to take everything in and get it repaired. When everything breaks, I got to take it to the, uh, the maintenance people. I got to call people in to repair it. I got to take it into the body shop. And it's not just taking that into the body shop, right? You could take this uh, RAV into the body shop and you could say to yourself, go ahead and fix the rockers in it. Now, I've got between the two sets of rockers for both sides. And remember, just because you buy the rockers doesn't mean you're using all of it. If you only need a three-quarter piece of it, that's what you, you uh, grafted in. But I've got $275 in these two sides. So um, let's just call it $300. Okay, I've got a day and a half into fixing all this stuff. And mind you, I'm not a body man. I'm not uh, doing this for a living, but I, I'm pretty proficient at it. Okay, and at the end of the day... If you were, let's just say, the guy was good at it and he got it done in a day, okay? He, say he spent 8 to 10 hours on it, which I highly doubt that's going to happen, but if he's doing it right, he's going to have a day and a half, maybe two days in it. Let's just say 8-hour days. That's 16 hours. I don't think you can get it done any less than 60, 70, 80 bucks an hour at a body shop. So let's go on the low end, okay? Uh, let's just say... Uh, Six hundred dollars, sixty dollars an hour times ten. That's six hundred, twelve hundred for two days. Let's just call it a thousand dollars plus your parts, thirteen. Okay. Now your paint, you got to put paint on it. Now I'm not going to go professional with this. This is going to be uh, epoxy primer on the bottom, and then I'm going to put like a, a black or a gray strip at the bottom. Probably black because all the other parts on it are black. Um, but if you were to color match this and do it all the way, you're looking at probably another 1500 in paint and time. Uh, the vehicle, I think the vehicle, this RAV, the 07 RAV, um, it, it's blue book is anywhere from on the low end 4000 
and on the high end, 6000 Now, are you going to go put three grand in this? Are you? Uh, most people won't, and I wouldn't. I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't. It will go down a highway. And if you haven't noticed, we have something missing over here. Used to be a little Hyundai sitting here. Uh, I've got some bad news for you people. She went to the long, long destination of the junkyard. She's gone. I hate to tell you that. Um, I hate to break the news to you, but little Susie had a fatal condition. Um, I tried to talk her out of taking that vaccine, but she took it. And she come down with myocarditis. So, she's gone. We got to move on, people. We got to move on. But uh, at the end of the day, one last look at the RAV. We wouldn't spend uh three thousand dollars getting this repaired but we will spend three hundred dollars and a little bit of our time a couple days of our time uh to get it back to where we can say how do i put this we're going to get another couple years out of this people because from here on in now that i've got everything needled i think i've showed you that already but let me show you again i took the needler and the scaler and i cleaned all this up now when i go ahead and put a fluid film on this it's going to be a colored fluid film it's going to be black we're going to get a couple more years out of this it's got brand new brakes all the way around it i just put them on the front and back i actually had if you look at this caliper up here that got warrantied people they uh i took the old one in the guy said to me this looks like it's uh ancient i said yeah well it's under warranty it's in your system but uh that's the rocker panel She's in. We got one side done. We're going to get the other side done. This is Bry. I'm out here in the uh, country. I'm enjoying the elements. I'm enjoying my day. This just says, this no humidity for you. This is a very nice day. Uh, very nice temperature. No bugs out. Um, and you got her done, people. When you put your mind to something, you can get it done. You just have to stay on top of it. You cannot stop in the middle of it and say, let me go sit down. Let me go watch some TV. It's over. Pick your tools up, put them in the garage. You're not going to do any more if you do that. Um, I've been there. I've done that. Trust me. And you have to just stay on top of it, just like as if this was a job. You have to stay right on top of it and say, I'm going to spend eight, nine, ten hours. We're going to put the sun to bed at night. By the time I pick tools up and everything, uh, the sun will be going down, people. I'll be looking to uh, put some kind of wood or something on the burn pile and uh, see if we can't. We're doing a little bit of cleanup every day. When you're around and you're in the same location for years, you accumulate things that, and at one point you'll say maybe I'll use it, and at another point it gets to the point where it's it, it can it can become obsolete or it can just become a scenario where you look at it and say I'm never going to use that thing, you know. So I usually try to clean up every uh, so often and get everything picked up and cleaned up, but uh, we've got a mess here today. Let me tell you, with all these tools, we've got a big mess. And I've got to go ahead and pick these up. I'm going to probably have another hour out here doing that. I'm going to take the uh, rav off the jack stands. I'm going to pull it up closer to the shop. Uh, I've got a 25-foot lead with my uh, welder. I'm going to bring that outside tomorrow. We're going to tack up all these uh, panels. And then the fun begins. We're going to go ahead and put some epoxy primer on the outside. We're going to go ahead and, and put some uh, uh, flex seal all over the inside with some uh, body sealer and uh seam sealer and we're going to get her done we're going to get her done right so i hope you're ready because we're going to do an update on this maybe tomorrow night we'll give you a, uh, an update on the rav4 uh she's an 07 and she's uh going to see a few more years all right people this is bry i got to get on down the road